welcome to Labor Lens. I am Sharon Ijatson. On this week's edition of the program, we'll be focusing on ex staff on NNSL who served the country's career for more than 10 years and are yet to receive pension or adequate gratuity. On this week's edition of the program, we'll be discussing about their plight and the demands of these workers. We will be right back. Leave Nigeria, go to Duala, Takuradi, Abidjan, San Pedro, go to the log. So that is our last spot in Africa. We made three days to reach Dublin. They say water means with a fuel. From there, we there for four days on top of water, no way to go again. The water don't push the ship, go with a rock. Captain called me, said, we can leave. He said, there's no way to win. Nobody to escape him. But the captain told me, say, but Mr. Salawa, make sure my wife and my children are safe. Oh, God. I beg. I run. I want to go to my room to go and carry my money and my rich watch. Super officer, he shout for me from my back. Mr. Salawa, you don't want to run for your life. From there, I take it, turn back. I know if you go for my room again. Let's like say I go for my room and I'm inside the ship, I will die. Not dead. The time Gurara sink, we were be following her. Many of our seamen perished. After all that, what was the reward? 50, 60,000. Which is nothing to compare with the suffering, the labor. Ghana was paid reasonable money. Sierra Leone was paid something reasonable. Nigeria, they're not even, ah. <laughs> now wow. We are not remembered. I need their support financially. I am down. I am totally perplexed. I am hopeless as I am. There is nothing with me. There is nothing with me. I won't lie to you. There is nothing with me. There is nothing to keep the children. There's nothing to feed, there's nothing to eat. I've been owing all around. And it wasn't like this before with me. Nobody to assist him. No one to come to my aid. Life is fast ebbing out of the few remaining sailors of the defunct Nigerian National Shipping Line, NNSL, with many sick and others living in the most unimaginable deplorable conditions. This first crop of indigenous sailors had served on board 27 marine vessels owned by the federal government until NNSL closed shop in 1995. Their benefits remain unpaid 27 years after. Prior to getting on board, many of them had been trained and worked with foreign liners like John Holt and Elder Dempster. Today, those middle-class workers who were unceremoniously sent packing 
live in abject poverty, far below a dollar daily. You see the period where I started this job. After all said and done, the country gave me 60,000, 70,000. Is that money for how many weeks or months without the money lead me with family? So they don't they forget about that one. It's no money. That's why we take some time. Landlord the driver sweep everybody out of their house. So you cannot be that way. Just like that, I become Area boy. Area boy. Become conductor, become a driver, this, that. My daughter is living here. So when that place, the place is not all right for me, then the place is thinking this and that. If I, when I see it, when I face it, I think to my daughter, come and live with her. Memories of their labor and the eventful turns of their lives at and after the NNSL, which recorded three incidents between 1969 and 1989, remains etched in their minds. The sinking of MV River Gurara at the Bay of Biscay, the gruesome death of 21 colleagues that followed, and the nonchalant disposition to the payment of their retirement benefits have scarred them the most. 93 million pounds with the people, insurance people, both groups, the cargo we carry and the people with the for inside the ship. They got me, that 10,000 they give me. 10,000. <laughs> that check they give us, they give the end the money. They give us the everybody hold the check. Two o'clock, then come back, they say, the company don't get money. <laughs> they say, there's no money. Now we go back. Carry want to go back, go with military, for Nigeria, go Allah, they can swear for them. That they are, swear for them. Take my hand, knock, God, two times. I say, when I go take one dollar out of 93 million, pay insurance to pay. When I take one dollar, go change up, don't give us penny, penny. They say, I, swear. I say, yes, I swear for now. And that's where you go catch it now. If you say in England that day, I don't go work. I go there, I have that money. I need that money, I go there. The people where they, where they are among us, where they, where they say they're there for England, they need some money now. They don't come from Nigeria again. Where did they, where did they come to there? Unfortunately, recurring sad tales border around how poor the seamen's working conditions were. An allegation which the refusal to fully and promptly pay them their due benefits lends credence to. So, may that it is forever. So, may that it is forever. In the struggle for our members. <laughs> I'm just, I'm looking at the faces. <laughs> no, I'm just recognizing my face. People of goodwill, like as these people did, if they bring my, if they have sympathy on us, we can get something. You know how many years when we did, so many of our people, members, have died. So many well-to-do seamen. Then I got an engine in here before. All has gone without seeing anything. I don't even want nobody to remember him again. So, as soon as I come to, it's just like a miracle. I wish, by the help of God, anything can. I'm going to get you who will be happy. Take it. Thankfully, the Maritime Workers Union of Nigeria 
is relentlessly at the forefront of fighting for the deprived worker and is providing them with support. While it is hoped that this is achieved soon, this bustment of the actual figures should be prioritized to avoid controversy that has trailed the payment of the gratuities and to ensure that no party is shortchanged. Stakeholders are optimistic that the Ministry of Transportation will do the needful to wipe the tears of Nigeria's unsung heroes. NNSA was uh, liquidated. The workers were not paid. These are the ratings and some of the officers of the NNSA, the front NNSA. Because they were not paid, they went to court. Justice uh, Atilade gave ruling in 1991 that they should be paid. That judgment was not implemented. They went back to NIC when Justice Adejimo ruled that they should be paid pension and gratuity. All the same ratings that work with uh, different national shipping line. The judgment was not implemented. Not until Obasanjo took over. Abiy Sekibo, the then Minister of Transport, set up a committee to look into their matter. The issue kept lingering on until when the Honorable Minister of Transport, Umar, after Abiy Sekibo, Umar came in. They now give directive that they should be paid. They carry out second verification to know those who are alive who are, who are not alive. That was in year 2007. So they paid them. The total uh, number of seamen were not paid. In year 2010, the remaining ones were paid. Bringing total to the number of People paid to about 1,013, thereabout. We are appealing to the federal government to look into the plight of these agency ferrets. They should implement the court judgment. Because the court judgment is explicit that they are entitled to both gratuity and pension. Even though the gratuity that they were paid, they were underpaid because. As at the time they were serving, they were being paid both in foreign currency and in local currency. And when they were to calculate gratuity, they calculate gratuity based on Naira. You can imagine the exchange rate today. Everything that comes into this country through the sea is brought by seafarers. These are people that who have put up their, their life, left home. Some of them will stay at sea nine months, some of them six months, some of them a year plus. They will travel from one point to another point. They see a lot and we pass through a lot in the sea. Right now, now we have gone the path beyond the era where we work that we don't have any employment. No, now it is not so again. But the union, since Madagascar Union of Nigeria, since the other four branches came together and became Madagascar Union of Nigeria, every two two years, every one one year, conditions of service have been put in place, and they have been reviewing those conditions of what service. As I'm talking to you now, we have even gone beyond the issue of only we and companies. Now, the union with the companies and also even with the federal government via NIMASA. We have now come together that for us to be able to form a single CBA for the seafarers in the industry, both the officers and both the ratings, to have a single CBA. Because it's with the same thing that an officer passed through, the same thing the ratings pass through in the sea. If they can do it in time, I help the helpless. Let the, let the dead people, let the dead, the, the, the dead soul, let them, let them rejoice. Let them be happy. Let them help the poor. Let them help the pensioner. We are dying in secret. We are dying in silence. We need government. We need assistance. 
May the labor of our heroes past not be in vain. On the profile interview segment this week, I was speaking with the President General of the Maritime Workers Union of Nigeria, Prince Adewale Adeyonju, brings us up to speed on the demands of these retirees of NNSL, while also declaring a trade dispute between the union and the Ministry of Transportation at the federal level. It's good to have you on the program. Thank you for having me. Once again, we're here to discuss um, the welfare of um, workers under your union. This time around, um, the Maritime Workers Union has declared a trade dispute with the Ministry of Transportation following unpaid um, benefits um, of <coughs> retired NNSL workers. Um, can you bring us up to speed on why it's important for maritime workers to declare um, trade disputes over these um, retirees? Well, I think uh, the issue has been on for almost how many years now. Uh, I met it on ground when I resumed as the President General of the Union. And then uh, we look at the files, we find out that the seafarer under the defunct NNSL, uh, the government refuses to honor what we call court judgment. Because there was a court judgment against the Ministry of Transportation where the gratuity, including the pensions, was given against them, that the workers under the defunct NSL should be paid. Committee, I was told, was uh, set up where some were paid their gratuity without pension. As I'm talking to you now, we've lost too many of these aged staff of the defunct NNSL. And the only thing we can do is to declare three disputes against the Minister of Transport, who had bent not to pay them their pension. So the condition of all those old retirees is so pathetic. Some of them have died. Some are homeless. And these are the people that are putting their best for this great country, where the government failed to recognize the effort the seafarers have put in place. So the only option for us is to uh, uh, declare trade disputes. Um, we saw that you took that step to visit um, one of the retirees. Um, from your conversation with the retired um, seafarer, um, how would you say the feel about um, how they've been treated? by the federal government and other relevant stakeholders? Well, uh, to me, all of us, we are going to hold one day. Whatever they did to them, everybody will account for his stewardship. That's my belief. I visited their houses and I found out that the condition they have is so pathetic. Pathetic in the sense that some of them cannot even afford to pay their house rent. Talk less of evil eating and their money is hanging somewhere, and somebody is sitting on it. So we, somebody that are putting best for this great country should not be treated as if they are slaves, they are all slaves in their father's land. So to me, the union were out to make sure that the right of these uh, uh, aged seafarers will be given to them, and that's our stand. So we are waiting for Ministry of uh, Transport to uh, do justice to it, because I learned the new minister has just uh, resumed. So we're only trying to give him some time to study the file. And uh, so that uh, the right, the pensions, the gratuity that remains will be given to all these people. How do you think these um, retirees will feel if um, um, the union is um, able to get um, their benefit from the federal government? Can I can assure you are going to get that benefit. I can assure you because uh, it has got into a climax where the union will not fold their hands anymore and wait for our respected seafarers to die without being given their rights. So we are out. 
So the option we are going to apply, we will tell the whole world very soon. Because uh, the, the matter is, is so pathetic. Uh, as I'm talking to you, nobody is happy about what happened. Uh, where people contributed to one particular area and uh, at the end of the day, their right was being denied. Uh, it's unfortunate. These politicians, I, I don't want to talk about them, but let me just uh, hold on to the, the declaration of the trade dispute that we have declared against them. So we are waiting for the outcome. It's um, over 25, 27 years, to be precise, that um, the NNSL was um, liquidated. It used to be a national carrier, and um, there were lots of um, vessels that it had um, before its liquidation. Of course, these assets were sold, and um, one would wonder why um, the relevant authorities decide to short pay um, some of these um, retirees of their gratuity and refuse to pay pension going forward. Because from, um, from the information that I have, some received as little as 17,500 then, some as little as 23,000 Naira after serving for so many years. Um, at this point in time, uh, would you say that um, justice uh, was served at the point of exit? I, I think it, it was uh, mismanaged. The asset then that was sold was mismanaged by management of uh, NNSL. Labor first, labor first before you do anything. They're supposed to put into consideration of what belongs to them at that particular time. The Naira as at that time and dollar, you cannot compare it with what is going on now. So uh, they, they made a very big mistake of not recognizing that before, after selling the assets of the defunct uh, vessels or whatever, labor first. They need to take care of the workers. But they didn't do that. What they do was to uh, start telling the old world that some of them are not uh, staff of NNSL, but they have forgotten that they have what we call discharge book that represented the, the condition attached to being an employee of uh, uh, NNSL. So to me, they mismanaged the asset. Even when they sold the asset, do they not have it in the back of their mind that there's need for them to pay uh, what belongs to the workers as at then? So if you are paying me 23,000 as at then, what is the current value of the exchange rate of that time and now. So 27 years ago, compared with the life that these people are living today, it's so pathetic, my sister. So we, we, we the union will help to make sure that the right of those uh, uh, affected, um, our, our members, be paid to them. Um, do you think that uh, workers that are working at the moment will be discouraged by the way those that are retired are being treated? by government and relevant stakeholders. Also, what has been the response from other um, stakeholders apart from the Ministry of Transportation? Well, I, I think uh, if you don't do it now, somebody else will do it better than us. But what we have put in place is we're putting our life on this matter. Yeah, when you say decent environment, how decent is the environment? When somebody are putting uh, close to 27 years or 30 years in service, and when he's going to home tomorrow, you, be able, you, are, you won't be able to pay him what belongs to him. How do other workers that are still in the service, how are they going to feel? They will also feel the same thing that uh, their past father, their past leaders, they were being treated as a slave. So uh, the uh, other stakeholders, the indigenous ship owners who have uh, brought in their vessels into this country that have engaged the seafarers. I think they should learn from what has happened to the defunct uh, NNSL, where uh, there was the, 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 the mismanage the, the company, and that is why the seafarer in Nigeria today is, is, is still not moving as other African country, countries. So would you say that um, there is need for more training and retraining for those that are even still in the sector to be able to compete globally? Yeah, we will be clamoring for that, that when you train me, I'll be able to train others, train the trainers. It's always our watchword. But some of the uh, companies are not ready to even train their workers, but they believe in making money. 
and the workers that are the asset of, of any company. If you, a worker that is well paid, is going to perform better. The one that is not well paid, it will not perform. So we, when you train me, I'll be able to perform better for you to get more something better for, your, for the company. So we keep on uh, uh, telling the government or telling all the private uh, management to, to uh, continue to train their workers so that uh, things will change, uh, life will change. There will be a lot of uh, improving productivities, but the way it is now, they are not ready to do that. But we are out for all those uh, hiring uh, uh, companies that are not ready to train our members. Okay, um, finally, um I'm aware that um, those uh, retirees that uh, were affected by the um, liquidation of um, NNSL are about 2,000. Uh, but right now, as we speak, about 600 of them have already passed away. What would be the fate of those that um, have passed away in terms of them also getting what is due to them? Well, I think uh, we are, they have uh, their nest of king, which I think... Uh, by the time they want to pay this money, their next of kin will be part of the people that are going to collect the, the, their benefits. It's, it's unfortunate that the government will uh, be clamoring for more employment for, for their citizenry. They are the ones that are not doing the right thing for their citizenry. So to me, we, we want to tell the, the widows, because uh, I met all of them. And uh, we have assured them that whatever that belongs to their, their dead ones will be equally worth given to them. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. And that's all we can take on today's edition of the program. Join us next week for a fresh edition of the show. I am Sharon Ijasson. Thanks for watching and remember that labor creates wealth.